Welcome. Oh, welcome. Listen to how excited I am. Welcome, everybody. I'm excited to welcome you to this thing. And why shouldn't I be? Life is finite. How long are we really here? Let's make the most of every welcome that we have access to. Look, I want all of us to have access to as many welcomes as possible. Not just your Walmart greetings. That's the place that does that, right? Old people come in and they say, hi. Well, really makes a difference. Do you know, I went into went into a drugstore recently. No one said hi to me. Then I went, I got my pills. And I thought, no one even cares if I need these pills or not. I got home, flushed them all down the toilet. What? Not out of, you know, anger. They were toilet pills. My toilet's sick, guys. <sighs> it's bad news when a toilet gets sick because, well, they're so filthy and disgusting. They're a symbol of our shame, of humanity. What a terrible thing to have in your home. I feel like outhouses make sense now. The idea that it was like, let's keep this separate from where we do everything else, where we live our lives. And look, commercials for toilet paper have gotten out of hand. We've talked about this on the show before. Let's bring back shame, human shame. Let's start covering up table legs again. <laughs> Still one of my favorite things that has ever happened in the history of human beings. They covered up table legs because it was going to make people think of human legs. And then you know what happens. What must it have been like for, let's say, people in Hawaii? First time one of those powdered wig dudes showed up with their millions and millions of layers they're out on a boat. The, what a... What, think how hard it is for you to pack for a three-day trip to anywhere, right? Just get on a plane. Like, to condense everything on a plane so you don't get charged for luggage. So you want to bring carry-on. Now imagine back in the days when the only way you could travel was by ship... I'm like, well, I can't be walking around the deck with my regular hair. What if someone sees me? A bosun or someone. Yes, I'm packing all my wigs and hats. I'm wearing a wig and a hat on top of it. What the fuck? Guys, that should not have lasted as long as it did. I get so mad at powdered wig people when I think about them. That's my time machine thing. If I had a time machine, I would go back in time to the powdered wig people. And I would say, you guys are nuts. Let's do it. Let's do a trust exercise. Everyone take off your wigs. Let's go. We're just going to walk around the building. See how it feels. It's great, right? Now go scrub off your beauty marks. That one I get, and that should come back. Painted on beauty marks? Absolutely. Absolutely. They should be for everyone. And sticking a handkerchief up. Handkerchief up your sleep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on to have a freeform conversation with me inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then I bring on some friends from the world of improvising. <laughs> have you ever tried to say improv and improvising at the same time? That's what it sounds like. And then we do a narrative improv, one continuous story, using elements from my conversation with the aforementioned special guest, whom I shall introduce now. This person I have known for quite some years, she is an amazing 
stand-up comedian, and all-around performer. She does a little bit of everything, guys. This is like in the old days, triple threat. Maybe a little soft shoe. <laughs> Please welcome to Spontaneous Nation, Margaret Cho. Thank you. Margaret, thank you for being here. Thank you. Actually, you know, you and I both um, are quite uh, good singers, and we very rarely sing together, except That's one true. time we did sing. Yes, we did. And it was rather spontaneous. Uh, we sang. It was a Sunny and Cher song, wasn't it? I Got You, Babe. Yes. <laughs> Which and, is a uh, wonderful song. It was a wonderful song. Yeah. But yeah, yeah you, you, you do a lot of things too, so well, you understand. This is your time, not my time. It's a struggle. It's, the struggle of- <laughs> The struggle is real. The, the, the polymath is real. <laughs> That's right. Don't let anyone tell you different. Polymath. That's why they call me polymath. Poly. That's why they call you Paul, for sure, for polymath. Margaret, I have a question for you. Okay. This question comes to us from our previous episode's guest, and that question is- if you were going to get a tattoo in an hour, what would you get? Oh, I would complete um, the presidents on my kneecaps, which are uh, taken from the $1 bill and $5 bill. It's, uh, it's George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. And, um, but the, I have to complete them, which is really hard. It's really painful to get them on your kneecaps. That's because the skin is very thin. Is that correct? Yes. And also, it's just uncomfortable to have a needle going in your kneecap sure. over and over millions of times. And so, um, but I've been able to go to the White House, which I, I go, now this is a, another area of my work. Mm -hmm. I go there often, and I've been able to compare the portraits from the actual money um, onto my knees. So it's once removed because it was taken from the wall of the White House, printed onto money, and then now it's on my knees. So it's not bad, is what I think. So you go to the source material at the White House. I go to the source material. And you say, how are these coming along? Yeah. Now, what is left to be done to these well, tattoos? Well, I don't know what to put in the banners because there's banners, but they, they should have the names, but I don't know what to put there. This is my, because this is my opportunity for the greatest joke mm -hmm. ever. Instead of putting their names, what do I put there? That's what I'll never know. Then, then I need to do that. So I need to commit to doing it and do it. Uh, you know, you need to tell me what I should put there. Right. I, I thought maybe one under one it would said would say Disney, mm -hmm. and then the other would say Datney. You know, like a st stupid pun. That's a, the sort of the kind of joke that. But it's got to be perfect. That one I wasn't right. You know, pleased with as where you were not. But see. So, <laughs> I don't think I understood it. What was the second one? Detney? Datney. Dis, dis, Disney, Disney and Datney. And Datney. I do Do you get see it now. how it's dumb? Fine. Yes. But you, so two empty spaces that you have to make a joke that will be cohesive. Right. And you can't rewrite it. You can't do it again. Is there anything, I mean, do you think it's out there, the thing that would be the perfect thing to put in these banners? Um, I don't know because it's like you, you're you're really titling them and it has to be something that is your joke and then also it has to last for the rest of my life. Yes, or the rest of your knees. The rest of my knees life. Yeah. So, because, yeah, I could be, I don't know. <laughs> I don't you know get what, diabetes. Something, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That, and yeah, it does run in my family, so that works, works, yes. What if you just switched their names? That's good. So that's under a, Lincoln, it says Washington. Under that's Washington, kind of funny Washington. too. That's good too. That's that's all I got. I think that's I think that's what's going to happen when I when I have that hour to do my knees. <laughs> how many how many tattoos do you have? I have approximately eighty five. And what was the very first one? The first one was a very very large snakes and flowers around my stomach and back, and they were done by Don Ed Hardy, mm -hmm. who uh, was robbed by Christian Adigier. His, That's right. His designs were were taken um, from him, something he brought over uh, from Japan to America. So this type of tattooing, he's, he's actually quite an important person. If you think about the artistic um, aesthetic of the United States and what we are now. But unfortunately, he was he was robbed and, and uh, co-opted by Christian Adigier. So, so there, was no, there was no deal between them at all? They had a deal, but it, it went over uh, Christian overly overly saturated the market with it right. and 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 it got to the douchebag sector it sure did it really it wasn't anybody's fault but it just it just was oversaturated and so um Don Ed Hardy sued him for a hundred million dollars and won for in the name of art oh, won a hundred million dollars and then Christian died so we're all you know we all win <laughs> Well, Christian, certainly, because he gets to be in heaven with our Lord. Yes. Um, 
Margaret, did you? Was there ever a time in your life that you it would have been uh, inconceivable for you to get a tattoo? Did, did no. you always know that you wanted one? No, I, I was grazed by uh, people who were getting the first full body suits by wow. Don Ed Hardy mm -hmm. and, and Bill Salmon in San Francisco. So the, this was um, uh, something that I, I, I couldn't believe I waited so long to do it. So yeah. I didn't get my first one until I was about 30. Wow, but you had thought about it uh, like oh, yeah. for years and oh, years. Oh, yeah. I would have been starting when I was 18, 19, but I was um, too immersed in trying to be a comedian on Evening at the Improv and Bob Hope's <laughs> Young comedian special. That's right. So That's I had right. no uh, opportunities um, to do it, but now so I do. So even even tattoos that you that wouldn't show necessarily. Yeah. Um, you felt like you could not take that chance. No, I mean I always knew that I would have a full body suit at some point, right. but I just uh, it wasn't it wasn't that I was trying to prevent uh, getting them because I wanted a big career because I've never really had that. <laughs> I've never always just that's sort of been a comic, so it never really matter. It doesn't matter what we get on your bodies. I think. I don't know. No, I think that's well, but I guess I'm trying to figure out why you cuz you mentioned being a comedian mm -hmm. and being on these shows. Yeah. So was it a was it a career concern? No, it was a time constraint. It was a time constraint. Cuz remember if you, you know, were you doing comedy in the 80s? I was. 1986 yeah. I started. Yeah. yeah. So you 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 know all those TV shows. There used to be so many television shows that mm -hmm. you would do and it was like MTV but also uh, you would get to do like the Spring Break special or like you would go to like uh, comic Strip Live. You do a comedy on the road with John Biner. Oh, I did one. Did you do one of those? No. Oh, oh no, no, goodness. no. I did not appear on television until much, much later. Well, so then, what were you? You were just doing clubs and stuff. Yes, then, yes, yes, so yes. Then. I was just starting. Yeah, I was yeah. just getting started. Yeah, yeah. In you Philly, and Blaine and uh, Patton. <laughs> That's right. You're getting started. That's right. Because I keep thinking that you're my generation, but you're a little bit, you're a little bit y younger in the sort of. If I'm a senior. Then you're a junior? I think I was a late bloomer. I think I was in remedial education for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Because I, I did stand up in uh, for eight years in Philly before I moved out to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting into sketch and stuff like that. Yeah. So I didn't really have much success as a comedian until much, much later. But then overwhelming success. Over. Margaret, it's overwhelming. Overwhelming success. All I know is that you and I had a lot of success in drinking in the 90s. Yes, we were, we were very successful. Oh, we were very successful. We never failed at it. How do we survive it, though? <laughs> How do we live? I don't know. Uh, I think, well, I, you, I think you either make the choice to, to live or not. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that we made the choice to live. I think so. Yeah. I switched over, but I, I'm now, I, I sort of consider myself green and sober. Sure, absolutely. So that's more. Absolutely. I like marijuana more. I think. I still, I still like marijuana the same amount, which is not, not that much. Yeah, you were never, you were never. No, I one. never. It never took with me. You never liked it, it and never you didn't. Took with me. You just didn't. You knew right away. This is not. <laughs> no, that's not what I do. And he always wore suits. See, Paul always wore very dressed up. <laughs> just denied, denied pot. Of, you know, and I, I gave it a fair shake, though. You did. I try feel it. like I gave it a fair shake. Did you yeah. try it? Yeah. Oh, many times. Mm. Many, many times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did not have. I did not have the, the same epiphanies that many of my friends did. Well, but we just had dumb epiphanies. I think. Just e e epiphanies are epiphanies. Yes. I don't judge them. But we just. We just. I don't know. It's all very damaging to the body, but I. I think pot is less damaging. Everything in moderation. Yeah. Did I you quit smoking cigarettes? I did quit smoking <gasps> cigarettes. That's that's just a dumb thing. That's that a nobody dumb should thing. do. I yeah. started again. Did after you really? Four, after quitting for 14 years. I don't know what's going on. After 14 years? Yeah. I'm not sure. With your with your marijuana, do you take it every which way? Uh, I usually take it in now a dab's rig, which I need a blowtorch for, which makes me feel stupid. Hold on a second. What did you say? I needed it in a dab's rig. <laughs> Is this rig. another Disney Datney situation? No, it's not a Disney, it's Datney. It's okay. a dab's rig, though. That, that's dab's that, rig? A dab's rig. Where Is this you, from Blade Runner? Uh, no, but it should be. You need a blowtorch. I fortunately can wield a blowtorch because I'm a chef. Sure. So I'm good at that already. But if I wasn't, it would not be a good idea to give a stoner a blowtorch. And it heats up the um, concentrate, the pure THC, because now it's like you're mainlining it. Right. Because now we've been through, you know, all of these different kind of pot situations. And I mean, I'm I'm now smoking pot with Snoop Dogg and Bishop Magic Don Juan. Sure. So this is I've gone from uh, amateur relatively mm -hmm. to it to it's beyond professional. What would you say if you think about stoners? What would you say getting stoned with those guys would be like? That would be. It's like the World Series. It's oh, it's it's <laughs> like getting stoned with Bobby Fischer. 
Right. And then you get, you get lost. <laughs> not playing chess with Bobby Fischer, but getting stoned with him. <laughs> yeah, not playing chess. Same, 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 same thing, thing applies. That level. Could you explain to our listeners the Bishop Don Magic Juan in case they don't know who he is? The Bishop Don Magic Juan is, um, he is the... Uh, promoter for the event called the Players Ball, which happens in a different city every year. And it, it, it really, um, it is the night for uh, pimps, mm -hmm. um, I guess, mm -hmm. and also uh, all of the women that surround them. Hose. And no, I don't, I don't like to say hose. I don't, I mean, I don't, I, it, that's what they call, you know, they say pimps up, hose down. There's a, a number of documentaries about it. Yes. Um, although I, I really love sex workers. I was one. Mm -hmm. um, so it was Ebby. So <laughs> Ebby got me. The, Ebby got me the ours. job. She's a friend of ours. She got me the job when we were like fifteen. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that. You know, I don't want. I, th I think. I think hoe is negative. I, I think it's negative. I kind of think pimps are negative too. <laughs> pimps are more negative. But <laughs> if you look at the um, sort of as a stoner, it's impressive just right. to say. But Don uh, Bishop. Don Magic One. <laughs> Bishop Don Magic One. He he was kind of an icon around the time in the 90s where comics would send each other VHS tapes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we would make make these like collective tapes. He was always sort of featured in there because he was such a legendary um figure. And yeah. also the movie Pimps Up Pumps Down is very popular. Mm -hmm. And the players ball. And I remember one year when they elected a white pimp. Well, and all the tables were turned. I'm sure there was an outcry. It, well, it was really, it was their kind of diversity. They all celebrated him too. <laughs> it was a really, I, I don't know what, I don't know what the equivalent would be. I mean, there is no real equivalent in um, modern day society to that kind of diversity. You don't think the election of Barack Hussein Obama? No, not exactly, because <laughs> there was a lot of different things that happened um, to make it possible for us to have a biracial president. Sure. You know, there was there was the disaster of the Bush administration. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of different things and people looking for change and hope. And I worked on the Obama campaign, so I know I was on the campaign trail. You don't think it was the same for these pimps? I think it was. Who was okay, the pimp you know of the year the previous year? Oh, John Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> um no, Al Gore. It was Al Gore. <laughs> and no one ever talks about it. It's, a it's shame. weird because nobody talks yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he can. I, I don't think he can run again. I I don't think so. After Al, I'm I'm really freaked out by Al Gore. Why are you freaked out? By well, because of the rape allegations. Oh, I have not heard this. Oh well, see, um, this is all Al. Uh, allegory. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not. I don't think it's been proven in court of law, and I think he paid a lot of money. I don't know if I don't know if it's an allegory. It's not an allegory. This is all alleged. It's all alleged. But it doesn't it make make it an allegory if it's alleged? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't think so. Uh, kind of a cautionary tale. Of <laughs> well, not to you know be. what? There's there is that. There is that. You know, don't get in call massage. <laughs> don't get oh, it in your home. I forgot about don't the massage. Don't get a massage. Thing. Yeah, it that was a while ago. And that went away, right? Kind of went no away. No one ever talks about it anymore. I feel like you know he had. The thing is, is about the 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 liberal side. The, they they do have to sort of uphold the moral sort of I guess compass of of the entire the election. If you think think about like how um, liberals fight from a kind of a heart place, where conservatives maybe fight from more of a logic place. So that that's a you sort of have to maintain that. Kind of heart, open heart, uh, very good. Nothing affects you. Uh, nothing affects you from down below. So, so there's no sexual scandals. Although, sure. but then we think about Bill Clinton, and that's all he was. What about him? He's very. I don't know, but he never was accused of rape. <laughs> that's very true. Never. <laughs> Just being a creep. I don't think he's a creep. Uh, it's not it, that. It, that's what he was accused of. Being. Was he being a creepy? Oh, I, mean, I guess he, was just a, he wasn't like very nice. Well, if you're thinking about Monica Lewinsky, that that really does. Uh, she's never far from my thoughts. Well, I, <laughs> I do think that she was in love with him. I think that she was very enamored. But all the more reason for a grown man to be. A he was wrong. He should have been more responsible. He was wrong. Yes, but he often used. I know. I would totally fuck him. I would now. Sure. I mean now. He looks good. He looks good. Yeah. He I mean, he vegan. Looks, he looks great. He's a great man. Mm -hmm. He's um, a lion of a man. And when you meet somebody like that, it's very, it's impressive. So you know, I think, uh, yeah. I, all I'm getting out of this is that I would still fuck him. There we go. But maybe Margaret, not, not Al Gore. Maybe Margaret. That's all I needed you to say, and I'm glad we finally <laughs> got there. Margaret Cho, uh, 
This will be heard in the new year. We're recording this. We record these way in advance. And so we'll be hearing this April 18th. <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the anniversary of the San Francisco earthquake. There the we fire, go. 1906. San Francisco earthquake fire. Earthquake. No, the big <laughs> one in 1906. Right. The first big earthquake that we received as a city. Um, there right. was was in 1906, so that's the anniversary. Happy anniversary, San Franciscans! <laughs> 109 years. Uh, where can people find you online if they wish to find you? I am on margaretcho.com. You could also. F- I'm very active on Twitter. There we go. Like all day at there Margaret Cho. All day though. All day, every it's, day. It's really it gets real stupid. <laughs> so you gotta. I mean, it's just it's just updating on things that don't need to be updated. There you there is your endorsement right there. Yeah, so that's fun. Everyone, check out Margaret and all of her various projects. She never sleeps. She's always got a thing going on. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you. We're gonna take a break. When we were during the break, we will get our location for our improv for Margaret Show, and then when we return, you will meet our improvisers. All this and nothing else. When Spontaneous Nation returns. Hey, Dolores. Mitch, we are in a boat floating down an underground river in the dark as we follow a map left in my husband's empty coffin that has taken us to over a dozen countries where we've almost died by misadventure or execution at every stop. So while we wait for the, let's see here, Song of the Globats to begin, what's on your mind? Have you heard about Martin Bow? Just go ahead. Martin Bow is a New York City-based denim startup that handcrafts premium jeans that they sell exclusively online at fair price. They offer a wide selection of style, washes, and unique denims. Ridiculously comfortable handcrafted jeans made from premium denim. They use really high-quality soft denims that have a stretch component woven into the fabric. They'll feel amazing out of the box. No need to wear them in. No ugly back pocket embroidery or weird stitching. Just simple aesthetics for great looking jeans they have a great look and feel extreme comfort accessible price point compared to luxury denim starting under a hundred dollars versus high-end brand labeled jeans costing over 200 or 300 and a free home try-on program so you always get the perfect fit well if it turns out my husband is indeed alive i'll celebrate by buying him a pair of jeans Martin Bow makes these jeans themselves in their own factory. By shipping directly to you, they eliminate retail markup typical of luxury denim and can provide these at an incredible price point. Speaking of pointing, I can't see my hand in front of my face. Do you think the bats will start glowing before they sing or singing before they glow? Unsure between two waist sizes? Try Martin Bow's home try-on program. You get an additional size for free to try on in the comfort of your own home. Keep the one that fits perfectly and send the other one back with the pre-printed, pre-paid return label inside every box. Oh, all the talk about boxes just makes me think of my husband's empty casket. If you're wondering how Mott and Bo are able to price a premium jean at under $100, their family has been in denim manufacturing since 1982. These guys know their stuff. In-house production leads to better quality, elimination of production mock-ups, and ultimately by selling direct to consumer, they eliminate retail mock-ups. These jeans are already way underpriced for the quality, but the deal gets even better. Here's Spontanean Nation host Paul F. Tompkins. Oh, dear. Thanks, Mitch. Yeah, right now, if you use the promo code PFT, you get 20% off. Go to mottandbow.com. That's M-O-T-T-A-N-D-B-O-W.com. And use promo code PFT for 20% off. Pretty good deal, huh, Dolores? Yes, it's a pretty good... Oh, my word, Mitch. The bats are glowing. (laughs) Here's what I liked about that ad. It started off slow, but then by the end... I was totally on board. Welcome back to Spontanean Nation, people that never went anywhere. We're still here. We're still queer. You still need to get used to it. (laughs) Guys! The same admonitions, the same statements, and then admonitions every single time? You gotta be kidding me. (laughs) All right. It is time now to meet our improviser pals. They're all here. We're all sitting around around the table. (laughs) Somebody's shaking their shoulders. And that somebody is named Carla Kakowski. Hi, Paul. Carla, welcome back to the show. Thanks, buddy. Thanks Thank for you. having oh, me. That buddy thing. I love it. 
You're my buddy. Don't you want to be my buddy? I do. The, I cringe at that because it always sounds so... There's something about it that, because it's often used in a very condescending way. Oh. Like, oh, buddy. I'm, like that. I'm never condescending. You're never condescending. Is that so? Well, don't ask my husband, but oh. yeah. What is it like a condescending thing you would say to him? Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm so genuine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so genuine. Uh, the crossword puzzles you're doing every morning are great. That's as condescending <laughs> as it gets. That sounded too sincere. That actually I sounded know, like you, you meant they were great. <laughs> Do you think his crossword puzzles are pretty great? Uh, sure. <laughs> It uh, builds his intelligence. Do you I ever suppose. do crossword puzzles? Never, ever, never. Do you never. like games at all? I do. I like board games a mm, lot. Mm, I'm mm. pretty good too. What I'm about good, you guys? What about charades? Yes, I can do charades. What about running charades where you have to like? I just learned about this the other oh, day. I don't like it. I think we're going to do it on Thanksgiving. No, for the for the for the <laughs> listener, we're recording this Thanksgiving week, and apparently, <laughs> I'm spending Thanksgiving with the Kakowski family. Yes. Um, as well as Mark Evan Jackson and his wife, Beth, mm-hmm. uh, and some other assorted peoples. Yes. Uh, at the home of our friend Ben Blacker, his wife will be out of town. Yep. Weird. It's all it's all weird. It's very weird. And there's run, a bowl for keys. And do charades. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. It is a pleasure to have I'll you say, again. I'll call you sir instead and thank, of buddy. Please. Thank you, sir. You know what? <laughs> I don't mind it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Coming back to the show once more, Mr. Brandon Johnson. Thanks so much for having me back. Brandon, thank you for coming back. This is your second, third appearance. This is my third appearance. Three times is the charm. Yeah, or a lady. <laughs> once, <laughs> twice, <laughs> three times a lady. That's right. Uh, that buddy thing is a Chicago thing, too. They mean is it, it really? And they mean it like um, it's really an, an endearment. Right. Yeah, they're very sincere when they're but saying But do you know it. what I mean? That it's so, Sometimes it sounds like, I feel like it's used a lot when you're trying yeah. to tell somebody they fucked up. Or yeah, something. it's what a cop says to you or what, a, what somebody says to you when they're telling you to sit down, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> sit down, buddy. Sorry. Oh, that's even... Yeah. It's a fake friendship. Sit down, like, buddy. It'd be like saying, like, uh, screw you, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> How about, like, when people call you my friend? Yeah. No one ever says, my best friend forever. <laughs> How may I help you, my best friend forever? Oh, my sometimes acquaintance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my work friend. <laughs> Brandon, how have you been since the last time I've seen you? Are I've been you well? great. I've been great. I'm, um, you know, I'm having surgery soon, so <laughs> I'm trying to get these problems. I may have said some things to people in the street, but I'm getting this surgery soon. You know, it turns out I had an asshole tumor. Uh huh. It made me an asshole. Is this a thing that you were saying to people in the street? <laughs> well, I was cursing at people. You were cursing at people, but it's because of the tumor. Yeah, I'd kick a mid-sized dog if I ran across it. <laughs> <laughs> but what the doctors be- have checked it out, and it, uh, it's not me. What breed are we talking about? Are we talking like. I don't like anything with a vest on. So, like an Airedale. Mm. You know, sure. Airedale, they wear those ironic dog vests. Yeah. So, I, I always felt like they were looking down at me. Most ironic breed of dog? That's a good question. <laughs> Oh, is it? Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, welcome back. Thank you. Seated directly across from me, this guy, you last heard him, I think, on our live episode with Keegan Michael Key. I think that's probably the last time you were on the show. Yes. Well, he's back, <laughs> and his name is Chris Tolman. I have yet to be banned. <laughs> Do you worry about that? Every time. <laughs> Every time with me or every time across the board with anything? Mainly with you, but, you know, it, would, it, it could happen anywhere. What, would it, what do you think would be the straw that broke the camel's back for me? I think the fantasy is I would the say... The fantasy? It, it would, I would say something like that I think is totally like, ah, oh, Connect Four is such an asshole game, and you would, like, slam your hands on the table and say, sir, my grandfather invented Connect Four. It would be <laughs> something that I think was innocuous, and, right. but it, I had crossed a line, and it was I was never coming back. Do you think that I would be rich if my grandfather invented Connect Four? You'd have to be, wouldn't you? I mean, I I think the game is still around, right? Sure, it's still around. Sure, and uh, checkers. It was a very popular game when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Um, but was it so popular that there would be a fortune to be inherited? It's really whether or not your grandfather like had some deal with Milton Bradley to be like, now remember, 
the box right. will always say Jedediah T. <laughs> Tompkins or whatever it is. And I, JT, the original JTT. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that name is not on boxes these days. No. So. No. His name was Connect for. <laughs> <laughs> really? Connect for Tompkins. Is that Germanic? Is that, where is that? Yes, that's right. Connect for. Yeah, and that's where he's from. Oh, that worked out well. <laughs> he's from Germania. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now that you met those goofballs, I love them. <laughs> it is time to begin our improv. We have secured our location for Margaret Cho, and we are ready to begin. Now, I should tell you, just so as you know, when we are doing our improv, we will move about in time, and to help us do that, we have sound effects. Let's say we're uh, two people are talking, and then we want to cut to two other people talking the exact same time. Like a meanwhile, if you will, you will hear this cut to sound effect. Whoa, we're over there now. <laughs> surprise. Wasn't a surprise. You heard the noise. Let's say we're traveling backwards in time. Uh, someone's having a memory. We're discovering how something came to be. You will hear this flashback sound effect. <laughs> Love it. Let's say we want to return to the present day or go into the far future. You will hear this flash forward sound effect. Guys, it all makes sense. And now we begin. Here's our location. Provided to us by Margaret Cho. That location is... That's right. Build up. <laughs> Los Feliz, Karen's house, 1997. We take you now to Los Feliz, Karen's house, 1997. Devin, I am so out of my mind excited that you invited all of us fucking awesome people to your house. Well, listen, I'm happy to have everyone here. And if you don't thank me, you got to thank Karen. I love her. Karen's the best. It's true. I'm Karen. lucky to be married to her. Oh, my God. Go, Karen. Hey, I, <laughs> I just brought some of these pints I stole from the Rustic in the Derby. Oh, no. thanks, buddy. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. buddy. That's great. You we, stole these pint glasses from ba local bars. That's right. We can use these to drink out of. That's what we do. That's what we do with the age we are. Oh, is everybody enjoying some Spin City Punch? Karen! Karen! <laughs> Best show of the year, as always, Spin City. I can't imagine anyone doing a better job in this role than Michael J. Fox. Oh, may, may he be complete forever. He's dreamy. <laughs> oh. Thank He's you. so dreamy. I hope he remains complete. <laughs> now, Devin, has everyone got a, a glass? Or I see the glasses have already been passed out. Yes, some of the glasses we just got from buddy, uh, Roger here. And Buddy Roger, you need a glass. Buddy Roger. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy Roger has uh, brought some uh, pint glasses from the local bar. Oh, let me kiss you on the lips for a long time. <laughs> oh, Karen, I love your maroon lipstick. <laughs> oh, uh, it's a... Uh, <laughs> But it's from that new show I've just been watching, The Friends. Yeah. It's not that new. It's like three or four years old. I don't Come know. on. It's just a Seinfeld ripoff. It'll never go anywhere. Oh, Come on, y'all. Let's get wasted. Everybody knows reality bites. No. Buddy Roger is reality. right. It That's does true. bite. Buddy Roger is right. <laughs> All right. Let's start drinking and really never stop. <laughs> oh, I am drunk. <sighs> Guys, we've done it. Uh, How are you feeling, Iris? I, uh, your uh -huh. name comes from the movie <laughs> Iris. that was the remake of Wings of Desire starring Nicolas Cage. Uh, I, it does. That's exactly where it comes from. C City of Angels. Was that what it was called? Yeah. Uh huh. How do you talk to an angel? How do you uh, talk to an angel? Uh, that, that that's what I'm thinking about right now. I was thinking about the Goo Goo Dolls. Oh. Uh, may they be in band number one forever. <laughs> Karen, <laughs> you're drunk. <laughs> Karen, you don't look so good. Yeah, Karen, you And look yet green. you look so good. How does Karen look so great and so good, terrible at the same time? Karen, you Having are... you young people living in the <laughs> Same sort of like um, apartment courtyard as me. It's really just changed it's my like, life. It's like Melrose Place, but not on Melrose. No. Yeah. 
This is over here probably on one of those difficult to navigate side streets of the world's most famous neighborhood, Los Feliz. <laughs> I think it's Los Feliz. Just saying. Oh, Iris, don't bring that up again. Okay. Of course, that's the correct pronunciation if you're a Spanish speaker, but because we are just a bunch of hipsters hanging out in the hippest neighborhood in town, we are not going to pronounce it correctly. All right, I think Buddy Roger is up for charades. It's your turn. Okay. <clears throat> uh, sounds like... Wait, I think he said sounds like. Oh. S- sounds like... Oh, let, hey, how about this? Since we're all drunk, like. let's just use words. Okay, uh, great. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a movie. It's a movie? It's Got a movie. it. Sharks. Sharks. Sa- sharks. 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 Yeah, we need a bigger boat. A bigger boat, right? Shit, guys. Oh. What's the matter? Iris? Every time I hang out with you, I get so wasted. That's what we do. We get drunk all the time because we live in a neighborhood that has no gentrification. That's right, and never will. It will always be staunchly elder Armenian. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. Karen has an announcement, everybody. <laughs> I've decided <laughs> I'm leaving Los Feliz. What? Oh, no. Being around you young people has been the best part of my 80-some years. A lady never tells, but I don't think I can stay here anymore. Hi, Karen. What, what wh- when did you? you? How long have you been feeling this way? Well, dear diary, (laughs) here we are. Yes, here we are. I can hear you, diary. Yes, I'm here for you, Karen. New Year's Eve, 1990. In 10 years, our computers will probably shut down and the world will go back to cave ages. I think you'll be okay. (laughs) Diary. Yes, Karen? There's all these young people hanging out in the courtyard, but they never want to spend time with me. Shall I be brave? Shall I invite them over? Show them the light that you have within. But diary. Open yourself to them. The last time you said that, I spent so much time in jail. But you learned from your experience, did you not? I'll go first. Um, I am uh, here for a small case of arson. Um, but I am nonviolent, and I'm excited to meet everybody. Now, who is this big cut of beef? <laughs> well, uh... I sold counterfeit mayonnaises, several different types. Most of them had glass fillings or honey. Does your diary ever tell you to do things? Yes. Uh, I also talked to Inky the pen. Oh! Yes! I never thought of that before. It's not just my diary that tells me things. It's also the writing tool. Mm -hmm. Now, what are all those permanent tears on your face? (laughs) These are for all the souls that got lost. Can I go next? Oh, I'm sorry. I got accused of something that I hope no one will ever discuss or find out about. I would only share it with my diary, who is sentient. Oh, well, should I tell you or shouldn't I tell you? That's fine. Say you're wearing a mayor sash. <laughs> yes, that's right. Go ahead, then. Well, <laughs> I like to get massages, private massages, right in my room. And I don't like anyone to know about them. But sometimes, well... I take it to a different level, and people are uncomfortable. Have you ever thought about just keeping it, like, privacy? Like, you know, in, in the confines of your own home, as opposed to, like, an establishment or something like well, that? Well, the house I live in, it's a very famous house, so it's kind of hard. The monster's house? <laughs> <laughs> Let's say yes. Karen, I just, what is I just it, Karen? Can't. Karen, we can't leave us. Feel us. We love having you here. I won't be leaving, because... I'm leaving with you my tome. This book has so many secrets inside of it. Ooh, what's this book? This looks like you stole it from the Leo DiCaprio Library <laughs> on Franklin 
at Hill Hearst. I know that one. I love it there. <laughs> in our neighbor. It's right in our neighborhood. I took that book from that library, and I put all my secrets inside of it. You might even say it has something that goes all the way up to the very tippy top. Should any of these secrets get out? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, what could happen? But I trust you kids. Well, certainly, we're all drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And you should trust us with this book. Give it to me. Karen. Just give it to give me. Give it to Iris. Wow. Yeah, what I'm could ready. happen? Is some sort of scandal, like Rampart might be one day. You've gone into like a third <laughs> level of drug. Like these two are just hanging tight and like pickled. But no, you've I've become, like, pushed oh, through. Seriously aggressive. I've pushed through and I'm on the other side and I don't give a fuck about anything. Iris, are you sober? Probably bought some cheap drugs from the dry room. That's a local bar in this neighborhood. Yeah, I know. We know. We know. Can I? Have I'm the just book? drunk enough to be narrating what people are thinking. Is all. <laughs> Shout out to all the local bars. <laughs> Iris, take this book, but please do not reveal its secrets. I won't. I'll just read them over and over and over again, and then I'll tell these guys. But that's it. Okay, but you, how many times are you going to read them before over you tell Over and over. <laughs> right, and but o- but how many times? Just so we know when to expect. Let's say 105. Be. Okay, and are you a fast reader, Iris? <laughs> what did you just say? Are you a fast reader, yeah, Iris? I'm super fast. It's one of my superhuman skills. I will tell us what you just read then. What Wait. did you just say? <laughs> Iris. You have superhuman Yeah, skills. you bury the lead, Iris. All right, so that's my secret, but... <laughs> what do you mean, blah? What are your blah. superhuman skills? Um, I'm a really fast reader. Also, I can kiss you and stick my tongue all the way down your throat <laughs> till I touch... It. You know what? Wait, so that so that my figure balls. that figure no, uh, your heart your heart B T D D uh, been there done that yeah uh, you loved it you fucking loved it these things are gonna catch on abbreviations mark my words shortening sentences will be the future this is like your crackpot theory about drawings representing emotions. <laughs> Just me and Rorschach are wrong. <laughs> I just knocked over a dog. Oh, oh, tickle, tickle's worth is fine. Come here. His vest is a little off, so you might want to fix it. Iris, you, you, you gotta get. First of all, you gotta get to reading so you can tell us the secrets. I've already been reading it. What? That, what? As you guys are talking, I can multitask too. Is that one of your amazing abilities to it, read and talk at the same time? That's the third one. Yep. I. Welcome um, back to the news with Iris. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm Iris. <laughs> Iris, uh, we we love here how you are able to read from a teleprompter and talk at the same time, something that no one else has been able to do in a newsroom. I absolutely am, yeah. Um, There's a lot going on in Los Feliz this afternoon. Uh, Are you making this up? Am I making this up? Or is she reading it off of a teleprompter? (laughs) What a skill. It really is. It's something I was born with. Um, Let's just say that I have superhuman powers. My mom might have been, you know, a fairy. (laughs) Wow! <laughs> Wait a second, Iris. Did you ever notice, everybody, how Iris has little gossamer wings sticking out of her shoulder blades? I thought I was drunk. That's not a tattoo, you guys. I thought it was one of your many, many, many tattoos. It's not. Iris, it am real. I dreaming? Or is that an acorn shell turned upside down that you're using like a bucket to carry dreams in? (laughs) Well, let's just say that you are awake. Okay, Karen? I want you to read some of those secrets. (sighs) Okay, I will. Sorry, I thought Karen was going to say something. (laughs) Karen, were you going to say something? I'm just looking at her cagely. I feel like she's actually a fan. I think she might be a fan. Is Iris a fairy? Signs point to yes. We'll find out for sure and discover some secrets when Spontaneation returns. Lisa, 
Lisa, Lisa, Lisa. Hey, it's Peter Gabriel. Back at it again. Damn, Peter. Ha, fun meme. Listen, uh, I want to tell you about Lisa mattresses. Everybody's got to sleep on a mattress. You need a mattress to sleep. Uh, I don't know if you're a weird spiritual person you want to sleep on uh, the floor. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Um, not me. Like, I'm not, you know, I, I have a belief system, but uh, I still like to sleep on a mattress. Anyway, I want to tell you about uh, Lisa mattresses. Uh, here's what they've done. They've done away with the awkward mattress showroom experience that we've all suffered through. I mean, I haven't in quite a long time. Uh, I've been rich for very, very, uh, very many decades now. I'm doing quite well for myself. Thank you for asking. I don't mean to be boastful, but, uh, you know, the number one selling recording artist worldwide, beloved, everybody knows me from England. Anyway, you know, you got to, if you can remember, I can remember back uh, before, uh, you know, I really made it before I was a uh, Genesis that's right, look it up, younger people. Also look up Genesis, slightly older than the younger people. Uh, I uh, I used to have to go into the mattress store in, uh, you know, uh, where, where I'm from in England, let's say Leeds, go in there and, uh, you know, like the Leeds guy with his thick Leeds accent would be like, hey, lie down on the bed, see what it feels like. And I'd be like, oh boy, in public we gotta do this. This is uh, it's mortifying, I can't wait to get rich. And then I don't have to uh, do this anymore. Well, guess what? You don't have to be rich like me in order to avoid that showroom experience. What you do is you buy a leisure mattress. <laughs> it's a luxury mattress. You buy it all online. It's ordered completely online. It ships for free to your doorstep, compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. Now, what is a mini fridge? A mini fridge is like, uh, it's a refrigerator, but smaller. Now, I, of course, I got to walk in refrigerator. That's how rich I am. Like, you open it up, you walk in. I want a juice today. Oh, what's this over here? I, I'm keeping uh, the extra coffee beans on the shelf. Uh, but your mini fridge, it's smaller. It's like a little refrigerator. And so this box is the size of that. It's not even the size of the box that the mini miniature refrigerator comes in. It's the size of the thing itself. So it's a small box for a mattress. Like you, you, you're thinking like the blimey. There's no way there's a mattress in here. Don't forget it from England. It's a 10 inch mattress. Comes in all sizes. It's crafted with three unique foam layers, including two inches of memory foam and two inches of a really cool Latex-like foam called a Vena. It's trademarked. Do not create your own foam layer called a Vena. You can't do it. It's a beautiful name for a child, though. I bet I have kids. Uh, it's perforated to keep you as cool as the other side of the pillow. That's an expression we used to use all the time growing up in Leeds. The Lisa mattress is 100% made in the USA and ships for free to anywhere in the USA and Canada. It's a, that is a colony of the British uh, monarchy. That's right, United Kingdom. Good old Canada under British rule. Congratulations, guys. It's the best. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free for every, one, every 10 they sell. <laughs> Almost every 100 they sell. That is a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, that is not good. Please get that thought out of your mind. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free, and for every 10 they sell, Lisa donates one to a shelter. That's right. So you buy a mattress, 90 of your friends buy mattresses, and then they donate a mattress to a shelter because eh, what did we establish early on in the ad? Everybody needs to sleep on a mattress. All right. So go to lisa.com slash PFT. That is L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT. And at the promo code PFT at checkout, you get $75 off. That's a great deal. Lisa's a great company. You're a great person who deserves a great mattress. This is Peter Gabriel saying, shock that monkey. Karen. Where are you from? You can tell us we're drunk. Here's this land. What? <laughs> Did you say there's this land? Yeah, I'm oh, from okay. a land. I thought you said there's this land. I thought you said land too. <laughs> oh my god! Why? I'm telling you, I have to stop being with drunk people sorry, all the time. Sorry. <laughs> I thought you said gland. <laughs> like, what's the one from beyond? Like in from beyond, remember they use they activate the pineal gland. 
From what's from Beyond again? From Beyond is uh, from Stuart Gordon, the maker of Reanimator, who is his follow up, also starring, um, what's his name? The Jeffrey, not Dahmer. Yes, starring <laughs> Jeffrey Dahmer. It was right between the court case, so it was like. <laughs> hey, why didn't Jeffrey Dahmer be in more movies? <laughs> I don't understand why I'm being fired. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, some of your stuff is a little strange. It's, hey, uh, Jeff, this is ICM. We only take the biggest, most important talent. Okay, well, I think I'm a pretty good actor, and I book a lot, so I can't quite understand why you're letting me go. Well, we got some phone calls from the set of the Prell commercial. Ooh. <laughs> help me. Help. Shh, 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 shh. Shut up. I'm sorry that I have a I have a tape recorder in my backpack that uh right that uh, sometimes I shift around and I hit the button and it, uh, listen sometimes you come up missing Jeff and we just can't rely on you Jeff this is ICM why is your backpack moving Be- because I have a lot of uh, pain f- so pa- much pain f- Furbies in there oh. Those are very popular <laughs> are they at this time They're looking for a spokesperson really now Jeff. Do you think you can handle the Furby weight on your shoulders? I think I'm handling it right now. All right. Uh, <laughs> you're sure your backpack's not begging for help? help. It's it's uh, I'm supposed to, you know you're supposed to feed these things. You know. Like, oh uh, yeah. You pet them and stuff like that. It's like I don't have the time to pet all of those Furbies that are in my backpack. Okay, go ahead and take a stab at that copy there, Jeff. Hi there. Did you ever want a friend that was all your own? No. Someone. Okay. No, look, I'm trying to. I'm trying to do my job here. You gotta maybe I'll help you if you if you stop talking. Is he talking to his backpack? Yeah, that's what they do. Well, now your new friend has arrived, covered with fur and with eyes as big as all outdoors. It's the Furby. Give him love, and he'll love you right back. No, it's interesting. I wish it had a little bit more meat. Yeah, maybe if he put his teeth into it. Yeah, you know, Jeff, just think of it. Think of it of the Furby as like uh, just like a, a young Korean boy. Oh. That's brilliant. So delicious. What? Hmm? You guys, come on. Wait, is what I said weird and what you said not weird? Hey, this is ICM, It's ICM, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so it's a land far, far away. What's it called? It's called Bushnell's Farm. (laughs) Ah, yes. Very familiar. And this is, oh. where, this is where fairies come from. Yes, but you guys, you can't tell anyone, okay? I've been very Who good about tell? Uh, Who are we going to tell? Oh, you know what? Here's what we do. Why don't we tell the secret to the book, and then it'll be in the book, and then nobody will know it except us. That's right. Oh, so I just open the book. Yeah, open the book. Read it out loud. Read it out loud. Tell Read it, it out to loud. the book. Tell it to the book. Tell, tell it to the, the book. book. Tell, tell it to the, the book. book. Dear Diary. Yes, I'm here. Hey, that diary sounds like you. So what? Iris, you're the diary. I have a very similar voice. I don't know. Just because it's two women voices doesn't mean they sound the same, okay? okay I guess. Wait, I'm a All woman. Right. I sound completely distinct from those other two voices. It's <laughs> true, Karen. I can always tell when Karen is talking. Don't let them bother you. Keep going. Oh, my God. That diary is on her side. She's got some sass. Dear diary. <laughs> yes, I already said I'm here. Um, I am actually a fairy. I have superhuman powers, and my goal is to grant one dream to each of my friends this <sighs> evening. Wow. Iris. Why didn't you tell us that before we got so shit fired drunk? I almost couldn't pay my rent last month, and you're a fairy that can grant dreams? Well, yeah. It, it, let's let's dream bigger, okay, buddy? Roger? <laughs> buddy Roger. I want to live. <laughs> bigger than life? Bigger than life, Iris? Yeah, bigger than life, you guys. And I just had to get you super, super drunk so that, you know, all of your barriers were taken away and you you really dig deep for that dream, okay? I do feel like a lot of fingers have been exploring tonight. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay, Devin, you go first. <laughs> okay, what am I doing? You're telling me your well, dream. Oh, I tell so you I can- a dream. Oh, my God. I guess I have. Sorry, Iris. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know I'm fucking hammered. <laughs> yeah. I would think a magical creature would have just a little more patience. Uh, yeah, come on. I drank uh, a bottle of Goldschlager. I've invested many years into this friendship, and so I've been <laughs> waiting for this moment, okay? Don't ruin it Do you not for know me. how to pluralize 
words? Yeah, this friendship. I just can read really fast, all right? Doesn't mean that I can speak super fast. You know what, Iris? Maybe you read too fast and you miss a lot of things in, on the way. Maybe your wish should be to understand. Oh, go on, buddy Roger. Fake. Or wish for more wishes. That's sort of Oh, that's even better, Karen. It doesn't work that way. Oh, oh my God. It's disappointing. Oh, because I was going to ask for more wishes. And Zima. Ooh. Okay, can we just make it clear? It's not a wish. It's a dream. All right. Dreams and wishes are different. They're very different. Here's my dream. Because, okay, a wish is a thing that you magically want it to happen. And a dream is a thing that you wish would happen but never will. Right, I, exactly. Right? Except dream, that I'm going to make it will. I think technically a dream is the wish your heart makes. Oh, for like when that, you're fast like, asleep. Hey, that's like that bug told us that time. <laughs> Ugh. A wish is a dream from those who are awake. Dream a wish, and you'll wish tonight. Wish for a dream. Shame on you. Right, so I'm going to grant your dreams. <laughs> You're going to grant our dreams. Yay. All right. Yay. Iris. 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 I. Now listen, child. <laughs> when you go to the land of the living and you ask for dreams and wishes, you really need to be clear with them. Okay, Dad, I will. I promise. Jeez. All right, listen. I know you're 400 years old and you're in that weird sort of time. I'm not a child. I'm not a full fairy not yet. i a fairy. Iris. Yes, Dad. They're going to want to drink. They're uh-huh. going to want to experiment. Mm-hmm. You really want them focused and clear-minded when you ask for a dream or a wish. All right. Are you are you listening? I'm listening. I'm I just, see you rolling your eyes and staring at you. This is the first time you've spent any time with me in months, so I'm just like wondering what that. Well, happened. I'm busy with the giants, aren't I? Okay, I'm okay, okay. Sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. <sighs> now my wings are all expanded. Thanks a lot. I don't like seeing you like this. Could you well, just maybe put some leaves on or something? Uncomfortable. <laughs> Okay, Iris, I'm ready to tell you my dream. All right. Look me in the eyes when you do it. Okay. My dream is I I want to start a tattoo company. And I want to have it bought out by a French weirdo with no taste. And then I want to have aggressive people... <laughs> really worship my aesthetic and make it a different thing than I ever conceived that it would be. It's a long dream. You know, I could... Yeah, um, well, you sleep for eight hours. Jesus Christ. I could just make the good parts of that happen, if you like. What's the, well, wait, what's the good parts? You know, the all the stuff except for the part with the Frenchman. No, that's kind of part of it. I like, I like that part of it. Oh. Yeah. 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 Because then here's the thing. I'll take him to court and sue him for a million dollars. So it'll seem like you feel bad for me, but then I win in the end. Make the Frenchman LeBeau from Hogan's Heroes. Ooh, Robert Clary, the Uh, best. How do you know that? (laughs) How honest to God do you know the name of the actor who played LeBeau? I'm just a big fan. Don't even get me started on Ivan Dixon. (laughs) Ivan Dixon. Uh, all right. <laughs> Good one, buddy Roger. <laughs> what are you saying, Magical Iris? I was saying your dream is my command. <laughs> so for real, it's all going to happen? Yeah, it's going It's going to happen. Wow. Man, oh man, that makes me want to sing. <laughs> all right, so uh, you've already played the role of LeBeau. Uh, yes, I have. Are you ready now? And this is an ICM special. Okay. Are you ready to enter the world of high-end fashion? Hmm. Uh, what do you mean exactly? Well, uh, this morning I woke up and there was a dewdrop on my pillow that was glowing gold. This is uh, interesting to hear. I do not know if this uh, has uh, anything to do with the Lebo brand. Help me. Help me. 
<laughs> Pay no attention to my rucksack. It is, uh, uh, how you say, full of la farbie. It looks like his rucksack is kicking. That's it's sort of moving on its own. Yeah. It is not a, Still Robert, want to make a deal listen, with this guy. I, I just, need a rescue. This is just a thing I like to say to people. Robert Clary of Hogan's Heroes, he is no cannibal. So uh, keep that in mind with all of our dealings. Um, okay. Huh. Okay. okay um, well, so wait, so you're passing? I, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> All right, Karen, you're up. Well, it may surprise you all to know that years ago I met the great one, Bob Hope. <laughs> but I never really got to share my brand of um, Car- Karen. female-centric Car- humor Karen, with Karen, him. I'm sorry. Wasn't the great one Jackie Gleason? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's part of my dream. Oh, I spoke too soon. Forgive me, Karen. All right. I think you, it's Richard by the way, Gere. You, Richard Gere is the great one. You, Richard Gere. <laughs> Richard He's Gere is great. not great. With he a may, capital G. He may be great. I don't know. Who calls him the great one? I thought everyone did. No. Isn't that a thing? That's here's, a thing back on the farm. Here's the two. Uh, the, the, farm. Fairy, the fairy farm? The fairy farm. We the, love You them. call Richard Gere the great one yeah. on the fairy farm? Big fans. Child, it's movie night. <laughs> oh. Is it? Is it? Night for the the big great awesome guy. Well, my are, favorite. It's it's a night for the great one. The great one. We're going to hang a sheet from the branches of the whisper tree. Uh, now I have a couple choices. We have officer and a gentleman. No. Uh, Put something <laughs> on that the bishop would love to see. Oh, bishop! I just happen to be visiting, as I'm always one to do here in Fairyland Bush Mills Gardens. Uh, have you met my daughter Iris, by the way? Iris. Hi. Well, that's a pretty woman. Oh. oh. Better be careful. You're gonna have a runaway bride on your hands. Oh, she's hey. very funny. I wish hey. she would hope for me. Hey, Bishop, introduce me. Hello. Introduce me to it's, your friends. It's good to see you, Mr. Gore. Young no. Gore. Young no, Clinton. Think of the other guy. Young right. Clinton. I can't. I always see the back of both of you. Hello, everyone. Pleased to meet you. Just uh, Young Einstein. No, that no. that's Yahoo Serious. Oh, my apologies. No, it's me, Bill Clinton. I was just elected Pimp of the Year. That's right. The first, the first white Pimp of the Year. Oh. You were such a man. <laughs> Iris. A man. That's I true. mean, that's like Iris. a man's man right there. <laughs> Let, let's all well, watch a movie. Much. What's your name? Uh, I'm Iris. <laughs> <laughs> let's all watch a movie about pimps and prostitutes with Richard Gere in it. The, the great well, one. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe this guy's the great one. <laughs> so uh, Richard Gere is the great one. Jackie Gleason, Wayne Gretzky, and of course Bob Hope. The four great ones. <laughs> Any one of them I would like to do stand up for. <laughs> Probably Bob Hope. But if Wayne does Wayne Gretzky, does he have like a brick wall or anything like that? If you want him to. So you want to do lady centric stand up for the greats of comedy? I just I regret the path that I've taken. Not that hanging out with you children has not been wonderful. <laughs> Did you ever try to do stand up comedy before, Karen? <laughs> All right, everybody, shut up. You shut up. You shut the fuck up. It's comedy time. I can do your job. Listen, we're gonna leave the we're gonna leave the screens with the game on. All right, so don't worry. Go just, uh, yeah, okay. Just try to keep it down. And now uh, here's uh, your comedy person. Uh, what's your name, honey? Karen. Karen. Cuckoo Karen. Cuckoo. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Here's Cuckoo Karen. <laughs> hello, hello. Don't get up. It. All right. So here is my bag. Shut up. Thank do, you. do some Bill Cosby. Um, yeah, uh, that guy's great, and nothing will ever tarnish his memory. Uh, Theo, I support Theo. you. I support you. Thank you. You go, girl. Rudy, she's, she's actually doing it. What a spineless performer! You ain't no Elaine Boozler. <laughs> oh my gosh! You're no leafer. You're doing great, honey. Thank, thank you, sweetheart. So uh, the other day, my monthly visitor came. Oh, uh, bring on Judy Gold. Ah, uh, I could do a spit curl, but that changed things a bit. And how did it go? Pretty good. <laughs> You know, I just, I felt like maybe I was just a little ahead of my time. Yeah. And well, so this is, this would be a chance to just uh, tread the boards once more. Maybe I wouldn't bring so many props. Karen, your dream is my command. <gasps> this is Karen getting her dream. It makes me want to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. 
should we go in? I mean, we're late, and I feel like they're already going to be drunk. Yeah, of course. It's uh, been hours. I mean... Well, it's your idea to come, so we might as well no, get... No, a- I know. I just, I was scared to come to Los Feliz because I thought, like, you know, it's not gentrified it's yet. too far east. Yeah, it's too, way too far east. Jeez. Every time you want to leave Mid Wilshire, we get lost. Yeah, it's true. But I baked all these artisan breads because they're the thing now. <laughs> yeah. So... Right. Hey, boys. Oh, oh. Oh, hello. I've been I've been watching you for a little bit, just standing over here watching you too. Oh, oh. Uh, that's, Welcome to Los Feliz. That's a little strange. Why are you watching us? I don't know. I just thought, wow, those two guys they they look like they're ready for some adventure. And who are you? Oh, um, Chuck. <laughs> What's up, Chuck? What's up, boys? We uh, we took Fountain. Should we take Sunset or Hollywood to get home? Oh, oh, you're leaving already. You well, just got here. We just we're so late to the yeah. party and we just thought Oh, stopped. party time, huh? Yeah. We can have a party right out here. Right right here on the doorstep. <laughs> on the door- okay. Let's so have a doorstep party. <laughs> hey, what what about Buddy Roger's dream? Okay, Buddy Roger, you're up. Don't choke. <laughs> this is very important. I'm gonna give so you a no little pressure. tip. Yeah, it's I only hope- it's only the third dream, so it's only the most... Buddy Roger, I hope it's about me. It's the one that's the charm. I hope it's about me. Yeah. I really do. Hold on, that's a little weird. No, it's not. You hope that Buddy Roger's dream is about you? Well... (laughs) What if his dream is to star in Free Jack? (laughs) Don't ruin the moment with your weird TV show reference. That's a very popular film for this time. That's right. Free, uh, everyone loves Free Jack. Mick okay, Jagger, Sir, Academy winner Sir Anthony, Sir Anthony Hopkins. Hopkins. Ever since I stuck my tongue down your throat and touched your heart, I've been waiting <laughs> for you to talk to me that about your dreams. Hard. It was hard when you touched my heart with your tongue to tell you this. My dream is you on stage holding a suitcase with 49 other women. As Howie Mandel's career gets one more shot. Wow. Is there any way you could make something like that happen, say, even 10 years from now? I mean, if that's your dream, I was thinking more like you would take me out and I'd say yes. Then I get on the show and I win you. You would a human being on the show. Well, she's a fairy. fairy. Oh, okay, you know what? I say correctly. They're guys. like second class. I mean, are you second <laughs> Look, class or you, you sort of? You fucking got me. Are you like European male? Like how would how would fairies fit into being gifted? Um. Well, that's a great question. Like it's not like an it's iTunes like, gift card, whatever like, that is. <laughs> and the name of the show would be the biggest loser. There's so many details to that dream. I'm hoping that I can make all of them come true. You know Wait, what, what is this? Say. Hold on a second. What is this hope bullshit? You say you can make our yeah. dreams come true. You told us a story about hanging out with pimps. And fuck fairy. What? <laughs> Jeez. All right, they're yelling. I think we should just leave. Yeah, and who are they calling gay? I don't know. This doorstep party I don't know. Is I'm not having a good time. Yeah, Chuck, I don't know. You yeah, seem like a real weirdo. Pretty fun for me. Maybe I'll just keep making breads. Uh, and we won't take him to parties. Oh, Ooh, that's Karen. Yeah, I'm out, of here. I'm out of here. All right, I'm sorry. I, Gosh, yes, I can make dreams come true, but not just like any dream. Iris. What? Are you a runaway fairy? <sighs> oh, my God, a runaway fairy. Yes, I am. Because I can't help but notice that so far two of our dreams have yet to come true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, it... it I can totally make them come true, you guys. Just, like, not right away, okay? What? Well, how long does it take for the dream to come true? Well, it's when you really, really want it. That's, then it comes true. I want it right now. All yeah. right. Hold on a second. This is not some miracle on 34th Street bullshit. Are you having magical powers or not? Because if it's not... Mm. Karen, I do. I do. I have magical powers. I can do anything right now. Anything at all. Anything. Make it. Make look, it. Look. Um, there's my thumb. There it's not. Oh. That's not a. That's a little trick that you do for little kids. Or drunk people. Or drunk people, to be fair. And it almost works, too. All right. So you're like a half ass fairy. Yeah. I mean, I can. 
I have wings and I can talk about being a fairy, but maybe I can't totally make your dreams come true. Oh, I got to set the VCR. Speaking of wings. Do you use do the VCR plus code? Yeah. Yeah. It just learns it. <laughs> but here's the thing. What? Don't you feel like just being here together, like enjoying each other's company is like... <laughs> Uh oh, there goes it's Buddy like, Roger. I'm not drunk. It's Don't like, throw it's up on my dog with that. that. It's like a dream come true. It is. It's like a dream come true. You know. And sure, Fred and Danny didn't show up, but. Yeah, what happened to those guys? I don't know, but you know what? Turns oh. out, uh, that bread. Yeah. I, I opened someplace right across the street for Ralph's on Third. Uh huh. And La Brea. Right. La Brea Bakery. You're talking about in West Hollywood? No, no. Hey, you guys, I took my pants off. Chuck, what are you doing here? Party. Oh, my God. Yeah, but, I mean, we still had a good time without them. Hey, you guys. I think the Iris is right. I I think that the real dream is us being here together in Los Feliz. And I think that it fucking came true. Karen... We're going to stay here forever in Los Feliz, having a great time and always getting drunk. And we hope you you decide to stay here. Don't be in a Hancock Park. And Iris, you stay here with us. Don't go back really? to uh, Boondock Farms or wherever the That's fuck it exactly was. exactly right. We're all going to stay here in Los Feliz, getting shit-faced drunk for all eternity. You know, it makes me want to sing. <clears throat> You got dreams inside your heart. Um, has anyone seen Iris? Um, I'm just putting these posters up all over the Glen. She has departed this realm for another. I was busy installing moss where you asked me to install moss. Yes, everyone has a job. We're not keeping track of your daughter everywhere we go. Grow up here. Be a real dad, you know. Excuse me? Well, I Your mean, kids are adopted. Oh, there we go That's again. because I have more love to give. Mm. They're special children that I, was, that I chose. I didn't knock somebody up, if you get my meaning. Hey, she, she was a tree spirit, all right? Right. Uh, what's that got to do with anything? I'm just saying it's hard to resist. Be, you know what? You, you should learn how to control yourself. And don't make excuses. Why don't you learn how to control yourself? Oh, sorry. sorry. Wow, let's keep this about Iris. Sorry. Oh, my word. Your dream becomes real to you. You guys, I really think it's pronounced Los Feliz. I, uh, uh. And it all happened. At a place called Los Feliz, Karen's house, 1997. Carla, what would you like to tell the people about? Where can they find you online, uh, etc.? Okay, you can find me on Twitter at Carla Kukowski. That's right. And I do an improv podcast. Yes, you do. At Improv Yak. Mm -hmm. Y-A-K. That's there it. Go. There you That's go. Me. It's yakking about improv, but also the logo is a yak like the animal mm -hmm. doing some improv. <laughs> I one love one to assumes see that. that'd be a fun show. Im <laughs> a bunch of yaks improv and yeah, yeah. Well, I just, I just like to see what they would do with the suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, I feel like that's your animal noise across the board. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Brandon Johnson, yes. tell the people things. Man, you guys can find me on Facebook. <laughs> Chris Tallman. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter, Mr. Chris Tallman. And I just want to remind everybody that uh, on Friday, April 22nd, the Huntsman Winter's War That's will right. be coming out. That's right. What happened to the Huntsman? What happened <laughs> what to the evil the, queen? What's the Huntsman? That was the Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah, yeah what this, happened this, to this, Snow White? <laughs> she, is she not in this? She apparently didn't. She did not make it apparently through the Hunt Snow White and the Huntsman. <laughs> So now the Huntsman is fighting a winter's war. Oh, the, that's right. The original title of that movie was Snow White or the Huntsman. Something and I like guess that. the Huntsman won in the end. Yeah, the dwarves apparently did not test. So this will be following the adventures of just the Huntsman. Uh, everyone's favorite character from the <laughs> Snow White fable. <laughs> he has no name. That guy. 
Well, there we go. Thanks, as always, for keeping us honest, Chris, mm-hmm. about blockbuster motion pictures. <laughs> Evan Schletter, EvanSchletter.com, Evan Schletter on Twitter. Seek out Evan Schletter's work and procure it for yourself because Evan Schletter is only the best. As for me, <laughs> no, you shut up. Watch it. Thursdays at 10 on Fusion. Get caught up with it at Fusion.net, YouTube, Hulu, uh, Apple TV, those sorts of things. The Spontane Nation Lives, they happen once a month at Largo at the Coronet, the first Saturday of every month. Please come down and see those shows because they are always so much fun, you guys. <laughs> Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti. Thanks once again to Mott and Bo for sponsoring this week's episode. For handcrafted, comfortable, good-looking jeans that you can try on at home and won't cost you a fortune, go to mottandbow.com. That's M-O-T-T-A-N-D-B-O-W dot com. Use the promo code PFT and get 20% off right now. Get out your passports, because you're about to cross the border into hard nation. I'm Mark Hard, a proud conservative. And I'm Pete Hard, a godless liberal. We're two brothers with different perspectives, but a passion for politics and now we bring that passion to our show on earwolf now finally there's a podcast that tells it like it is about what's really going on in this country that's right it's the election of the century and we're the only ones willing to ask the real questions like hillary clinton what do you order at chipotle or ted cruz who would you cast in ghostbusters check out hard nation today on earwolf.com how itunes or your favorite podcast app Ooh, it's gonna get hard in here get hard people This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to earwolf.com. 